Welcome everyone, it is Sunday, August 13th, and this is episode 152 of the Omnic Weekly. I am D, and this week I'm joined by none other than a slightly healthier... No, this way. Hannah! This way. Hi! And <laughs> we got our own anti warrior for this episode, right there. <laughs> LP is in Guys, the house. I feel like I was so delayed. Sorry for the camera quality. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me once again. I feel like a special guest every time I jump on the podcast. So. <laughs> well, I mean, with, with the last episode and this one, it is kind of because you're kind of a, how do you, our expert when it comes to everything Peruvian. We never I'm a imagined, reoccurring We never imagined that it would kind of be used in this way, but here you go. I, I mean, that's perfect, actually. I know, right? This is... I, I feel like we should switch co-host nationalities, like third co-host nationalities every time. <laughs> so yeah, after this, I'm expired, guys. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> well, you still have a few. Dream complete, Overwatch finished, got hero. <laughs> yes. I think Moga, Moga is still like months away. And to be honest, I don't know where we'll be finding anybody that can represent, uh, what is it, uh, Maui? Like, what is maybe Dwayne the Rock Johnson will be our third? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah well, maybe. Look, if we can get John Cena involved in Overwatch, why not the Rock? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, we have that kind of pull with, with our, yeah, with our, us personally. We, yeah, definitely. we've had Roadhog on the show. We've had uh, we've had Farah on the show. Metra, uh, Symmetra. Did we ever have Sombra? Carolina uh, Ravasa? No, 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 no. We could, we could. No, I Carolina think. yet. We, she is um <laughs> she is kind of inclined to do these types of things like uh, i think if we should uh, if we would ask her she would definitely do it yeah um, we can do that and, uh, i mean it could be something for like during the winter period we'll, uh, well we need to do some more guests i think that's a good idea but how are you guys doing how thumbs are you up. doing I love, how, I love how everybody gives the thumbs up that's the problem with the <laughs> video podcast we're starting to do all these kind of things <laughs> you don't people, have to talk like the people that are listening are like <laughs> Is it still on? Oh, shit. Bastards. <laughs> but yeah, everybody give me the thumbs up. I'm doing... I'm also giving the thumbs up. Doing good. I mean, uh, I'm closing in on my holiday. Looking forward to that. But other than that, it, I'm, this has been a crazy week. The, the seasonal release is always extremely busy. And luckily, I have <sighs> I people to help me out. And But it's this season especially because there was so, so much to talk about. There was so much that they added in a way never before and they uh, we basically hit a certain threshold in the sense that they added pve which we have been talking about for years that has like since 2019 when they, even before 2019 we were already we were already talking about it but not in the sense like it's common and now this week it happened it was released and there's a lot of opinions out there we're going to discuss that in a second um but yeah it was a busy week but uh I mean, a good week. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm kind of happy with everything that happened. But let's just oh start. yeah, for sure. Uh, let's uh, the things that kind of there's so much to talk about that I want to focus on maybe four things, three things plus one, depending on how fast you are with everything else. <laughs> Us efficient. Yeah. Nah. Well, we're going to get through one or two things. No, no, seriously. One thing very important is like I want to kind of touch on PVE because that has been a hot topic and a bit of a negative topic, which. I think we all kind of have an opinion on and look at Hannah's face. For the people that are listening, Hannah's face is best described as I'm going to punch you <laughs> not, uh, towards me, I hope. Um, the second one is, of course, we want to talk about, I'm trying to pronounce it correctly every single time, but it's difficult. Iliari? It's like the, 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 the L and the J together, right? The double L. It's yeah. I think it's I Iyari, Iyari. Yari, At yeah. least that's how it sounds like she pronounces it, right? I yeah. think that's, yeah. They did this whole video where they kind of... Um... It sounds like there's an L and a Y sound when she yeah, says it. exactly. Yeah, it's like... Yari. Yari. Yeah. But yeah. It's not Yari. the sound we have in, in Dutch. So for me, it's always like... Yari. There we go. Got it out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyways, we're going to talk about that. Hero and LP is our in-house uh, anti-warrior. So he's, he'll definitely have a lot yeah. to say about that. I think... Be here. I can't, I don't know what it is, but 
through LP, I'm extremely proud of having a hero like this in the game. Like uh, LP was there for right? my stream. And and the first thing I said was, oh, we need to check because he has some, said something about that in the previous episode. We need to find like mm -hmm. voice lines if they, they do the, what is the language again? Which language are they using? Uh, Quechua. Quechua. Quechua language. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to a few of them and it was like, Api, is this one? No, dude, that's just Spanish. I don't Spanish. know. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> but then, and then suddenly, that one, that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. They got all excited, but it is nice. But anyways, at the third topic, I maybe want to touch about flashpoints and um, maybe on the progression system, because I just was talking with Hannah before we started recording because we were waiting on someone. I was playing Wrecking Ball and a push map. Because uh, <laughs> she's that kind of person. That's me. <laughs> uh, that that is one of the features in this uh, season that is kind of underestimated. I think that is an, a feature that is going to last so long and is going to have so much impact in the game in the long term mm. that we kind of brush over it right now because everybody has that same badge next to the hero. But at some point, it's going to be very well really important already but we kind of underestimate it but anyways let's start out with the pve um i'll start first with my opinion i made a whole video about it so if you want to kind of <laughs> have that in detail go check out the video but i got a lot of i knew i was going to catch flack with my opinion he has feelings guys <laughs> but the thing is i the people that watch my videos on a regular basis know i make it into a thing to kind of stay away from just kind of blatantly hating everything because of yeah. reasons that are non-existent. I try to kind of stay in the middle of the road and kind of look at every fact individually and assess it. And of course, I am of, uh, a big Overwatch fan and everything that happened with PvE, the the whole hero mission aspect being cancelled and the, the talent trees not happening, that also impacted me. I really, it really sucked that that happened. On the other hand, I also know how these things go and the back, like how this goes in game development companies, how you sometimes set yourself a goal and you're really ambitious and you're passionate about what you want to do. And then the moment you start working on it, it turns out it's way more than you could actually, you bit off too much. You can't chew all of it. It's just, it's impossible. And to, to have that happen at a company like Blizzard and then turn to your community and go like, yeah, we actually can't do that. We just we can't we don't have the resources we don't have the people to do it right now uh that sucks um and i can understand that people are upset about that but if we then get Absolutely. into a phase where things start to get released and that lore that we as a trio have been kind of waiting for but also oh the larger gosh. part of the community they start kind of showing us that i'm sorry i can't not be enthusiastic about that i know and and some people kind of all we're like, oh, sh yeah, sure, but the lore is nice, the cinematics are nice, but the, the gameplay is like uh, uh, ass. It's like really bad. And sure, the things that I don't like about the gameplay, and I mentioned those, but if you look at the experience on the whole, man. Positive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had a blast. Like, I did a few runs during my stream. I did a few runs afterwards, and I keep having fun with it. And I'm really difficult to convince. For archives, I do three runs, and I'm like, yeah, that was it. I'm done. Done now. <laughs> Not doing that ever again, or maybe next year. But these, I don't know. It's just there's so much for someone yeah. that I, that has seen like played Torbjorn so much, that has played Reinhardt so much. <laughs> to see these personalities yeah. come to life was for me was 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 yeah special. game changing. Yeah, it was special yeah. to see the doubt in Torbjorn's eyes, to see Reinhardt react to that and be disappointed, but still understanding. And then you at the end. There's going to be a few spoilers in here, so put your fingers in. Oh, wait, if you have your earbuds in, that is kind of risky. Oh, Just yeah. Maybe skip a few seconds. Um, <laughs> but that final moment of the final mission before they sh show the whole kind of post-credit scene, yeah? Um, <laughs> you can see this thing in, in his eyes with Reinhardt that he's, like, super disappointed that one of his best friends is not going to join the battle, that he's not going to be part of Overwatch. I know. And then the uh, Ganymede lands on his his arm, and you see that, like that big inhale of like, all right, you know, it's not like he turns yeah. positive, but he just kind of grab, he kind of gathers all, all right, his time courage. to get on with it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. he kind of he puts on a, a strong face, and he kind of moves forward, and all these little details. Look, you can be as angry as you want. There That's my point. So many details. Exactly. The nuances. 
There were so many details. It's like every time I play it again, I notice these different things. There's these different voice lines, these different interactions, these elements in the maps that we're playing that that just add so much life to this story. And as I just wanted to say, like you can be as angry as you want in the end. This is a fun experience. I don't care yeah. where you're coming from, who you are, uh, how big your channel is, how how uh, uh, how <laughs> how much you hate me. I don't give a fucking damn. Uh, <laughs> I just had I, a ton of fun like, with this. Yeah, how many times have I said it that at some point it became cool to hate on Overwatch? Yeah. Like Overwatch was cool. And then it became less cool, and it became cool to hate on Overwatch. And at some point as well, like with the disappointments that we've had from the dev team, mm -hmm. it got worse. You know, like the people who had been hating on the game for so long had ammunition. Yeah, definitely. And it, it definitely added fuel to the fire. And I'm the last person to defend those corporate asshats at the top, <laughs> right? Asshats. Uh, yes. <laughs> we finally got it. We finally at the point that we use the word asshats in this podcast. This is what I've been well, working for. Well, That's I mean, we have to like take that. apart we have to take apart like the dev team and the corporate ass hats. Yeah, I think there's but just that's like a the cool thing. Like the separation dev team of church and put... state. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The dev team have put so much work in and, you know, they were so excited for this release. And if I'd worked on it, I would be too. Yeah. You know, like when I was watching it, I can't remember the last time like a video game gave me that many waves of goosebumps in so short exactly, space of time. Exactly. Like, exactly. they've always been why, good at Why that. are we hating on that? Why are we hating on a company that cares so much about its characters? that they have a database of how each character types, not just speaks. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, you know, will sit there and put hidden details in, in the database for you to read that will have just so many little things for us to find and experience in the game. I and can't that, hate that. And that I they can't. Plan, that they plan so long. Like, at some point at Gibraltar, they added two bunks. They added a bunk for May and they added a bunk for Tracer. The bunk for Tracer yeah. had this uh, uh, these sheets with an airplane on it, which was just like, when I saw that the first time, I was like, what is that? Like, Tracer's not 16 anymore. What the hell is this? And May had these fluffy clouds. And that was the thing that went through my head. All these months ago, when I was watching that, I was posting about it. Like, that, those sheets for Tracer are kind of juvenile. In those logs that Hannah were just describing, there's an entry of an email that Winston had sent or that he came gave, gave back, get back from a, a company that sent him the sheets. Like he ordered them online with his credit card and he was tasked with getting them bed linen, I guess. And with his Winston mind, he decided to buy her because for him, there is still that girl that joined Overwatch I all those years ago. Yeah. And like, oh, she likes planes. We'll get her <laughs> exactly. like plane. <laughs> bed sheets but that little he detail is, it's just, oh, it's so it, it speaks it, it speaks to the character of winston <laughs> speaks to the character of of the whole storyline of of tracer and they put all this effort into plan that and like there's not that many developers that go that far in planning these no. small things together and to link them up and to be that patient to kind of have that planned ahead and oh my god uh, sorry i just remembered something um so I've been switching between doing the story missions and doing like just normal quick play. Um, and during a normal quick play mission, I had Diva and Farah on the same team, and they got so excited together about having joined Overwatch. It was so cute. Oh, I haven't heard those words lines yet. No, they... they were just like two kids. Like it's so cool that we finally joined the big boys, right? And they're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we get to save the world. How cool is that? <laughs> that is so cute. At the end of the day, there are definitely things that 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 happened in the past and things that are not yeah. like they need to be right now. But that shouldn't take away of what we did get to kind of look at that and evaluate that uh, for yeah, its own absolutely on its own merit. And like LP says, you need to also understand that we need to separate these assholes or asshats, sorry, 
on a corporate Thank level you. versus the, the, the hardworking people and the teams. I, I don't know. I think it was a um, Fariha that said it on Twitter that um, these people that work on this game, they, they just make a wage. They are contractors. They're people that are employed by the company. Uh, they don't get up in the morning thinking, how can we make more money with whatever I'm going to be doing tonight and this throughout this whole day? They are thinking about these fun details that we just described. They're thinking about yeah. skins. They're thinking about models. They're thinking about maps that they want to make. That is what gets these people out of bed every morning and that they want to show us it, and that they're so proud. When of. you have an upper management that is that bad, you have to be committed to what you're doing. Otherwise, you'd leave. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. These people are still there because... They love the game so much and they want to do this. And then you have these assholes on a corporate level. Like there's this new story going around in the games industry and I actually reacted on it on my Damesy's account. Um, so the company that made Baldur's Gate, Lyran, is a Belgian company. They're actually from my hometown here in Kent. Yeah. And at some point I was offered a job there. I almost worked there. I know these people pretty well in the sense that I have a few people that like one of their... The, uh, the uh, the head producer for the game is actually someone that was in the metal scene with me that I was on stage with on several occasions. And we used to be in the same forums here in Belgium where we were talking shit about metal bands, including my own bands and other <laughs> bands and whatnot. Um, so I know that company pretty well, and they've been working on this really hard. Um, now, there was this one storyline, I think it was IGN, that said, like, all the other game developers are getting nervous because of Baldur's Gate. Why? Because Baldur's Gate put out a 200, 300-hour game for a few bugs and the quality and the content that is in there, all these developers are scared. These developers are not worried or scared. These developers are, are, are inspired by what they see. They want to do that same thing. They have the same capacities to do that. The thing is, Larian don't have those same filters or those same issues with corporate suits trying to milk everything that these people are doing to get that extra buck out. The people that are involved with Larian, the people that are in upper management at Larian, but also uh, Wizard of the Coast that uh, is involved with Baldur's Gate and whatnot, the people that are working with understand that if they put out a really good game that everybody loves, that the players will support, in the end, they're going to make their money. And they may, might even make more money if they do it that way than to try and squeeze out every single penny at every single moment. And yep. that is the big difference. It's not that Blizzard is not working hard enough or that they not don't have the people. I do have to say, I think they lost a lot of their seniors with everything that happened, thanks to Bobby. Mm. Thanks, Bobby. Um, but that is a temporary issue. Hopefully by the end of this month, that issue is uh, solved indefinitely. But we'll see. We're scheming, we're plotting. We're looking at, uh, we're looking at Hannah and her people. Come on, guys, seriously. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's but, the UK again. Imagine Brexit strikes again. <laughs> imagine a world where those creative people that we were just describing that made these features that we were just describing, the voice lines like Hannah said, that they no longer that we didn't have to separate the state from the church, but that you only had like creative people making awesome products. Because Microsoft, I'm going to be honest, I think Microsoft doesn't give a fuck. Like they're not going to meddle in. They're not they're only going to step in if it if it doesn't work it out. It's a problem. Yeah. yeah. They, they like Activision Blizzard profited directly from all these people in a way, in, well, in a, how do you say that? In a big way, in a way too much, or a too big a way? Jesus Christ, I'm fumbling with my. In a large capacity? Yeah, they kind yeah. of like the, the, what all these people were making really, like for, they could actually track. Uh, every single task that was done, how much it was going to kind of get them in money. You know, it kind of had a really direct impact. Microsoft is yeah. so big. There's so many layers in Microsoft. There's so many subsections that they just need to balance the shit and they need to make sure that on a whole, they make enough money to please their stakeholders. And they understand that they can be micromanaging all these companies. That's why they buy yeah. companies. Like, where they have like so that. many revenues that each individual revenue is like less important. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they spread so, the risk so they get less yeah. nitty gritty and they get less involved in whatever everybody is doing. And look, Mike Ibera, who is leading uh, Blizzard right now, I think he's going to continue leading Blizzard once Microsoft takes over because he came from Xbox. Uh, to be honest, I think he was kind of planted a little bit. Because of <laughs> <I am industry. laughs> I wouldn't be too surprised. But um, he definitely has had his issues in the past, like with that whole forcing people to come back to 
to the office yeah. and whatnot. Like it's it's never going to be perfect because you know it's still a very corporate world out there, but exactly. things will get better. But if you look at how passionate he is about the games that they make, so passionate that he shares, he leaks skins. He leaks stuff in advance because he's so excited. You can't be angry at people who are so excited that they yeah. like. Well, you can laugh. You can laugh with it. You can laugh at it. They, you can laugh, can laugh, but yeah. like I can't personally be mad at someone that has so much passion that they do something like that. I, mean, I, I wonder if it had not been the the president. If that person, let's say that it was, else. yeah, they, they would still be employed by Blizzard. That is under the current circumstances, under Activision Blizzard. I don't mm -hmm. think so. But I don't know. Um, is Blizzard ever going to be the same again? I don't know. That's something for a future <laughs> no. episode. We, we'll do that Probably episode not. once but the deal we closes. We can get better than where we're at. Yeah, exactly. We'll do that episode once the deal closes. For now, let's mm. focus on the PVE. I've been talking too if much I'm already. I'm not too busy playing Diablo Four by that point. Oh yeah. Yeah, that at that point you'll get to play it. Uh, I'll be. I presume you haven't played PVE yet because you've been busy. I have not played. Yeah. No, I I literally just turned on Overwatch uh, for the new to play the new season and to get into the new battle pass. So yeah. just give me about like a week, you know, yeah. to like to see you guys right, next, right. and I'll have I'll have more feedback. So if you guys want to spoil it, that's fine. I'm I'm always the type of person that like if you have spoilers, just go ahead spoil it. I'm not yeah. I'm not too crazy. <laughs> LP is so uh, LP doesn't care. He's too chill to kind of uh, be bothered by his spoilers and whatnot. But no, I understand, man. You've been busy. I mean, um, for me and Hannah, it's been different. I know Hannah has been playing it. Um, mm -hmm. Hannah, how did you enjoy it? Well, you already oh, kind of said it. Oh my god, I like it so much. Um, so obviously we've got like the PVE stuff, which is just so much fun. Um, it's more replayable than I thought it would be. Some some missions are. Not all of them. Yeah, all right. Not the first one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Numbers two and three. Well, yeah. Number one, you can see that was like a trial. Um, it was the one that made first, clearly. You can tell by yeah. all, all measures that it is the oldest one. Yep, 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 yep. Um, Which one was your favorite? Oh. For the listeners, she's putting up a very pensive face. I am. Yeah. It's a very pensive face. I think number two is my favorite. I don't do, yeah. It's right. tough. Yeah. But I think number two is my favorite. I, I, for me, it's it would also be kind of tough, but there was like one thing in, in Gutenberg that really kind of, like the moment it starts out, it has this whole Disney vibe to it. This is the way that they pan over that workshop and they go like, the music, yeah. the whole music is kind of so Disney esque, and the, the whole atmosphere. And it turns ugly, clearly. It's still a shooter game, mm. but just that whole vibe at the start is like it just kind of surprised me. It kind of um, I have to would admit me. the. Uh, I, I want to like say it without being too spoilery. The 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 the. the the larger Omnic, shall we say? Yeah. And number three, it's pretty damn cool. Yeah, that was that was kind of <laughs> that's awesome. pretty damn cool. <laughs> yeah. And this this whole like everything that we got to see up till now, and if you look at the sequence of the missions, I think they kind of made them in the order that we get to play them. I think that yeah. there's some elements too where you can see that um, the the uh, the first one is actually pretty close. To the one that we played at BlizzCon in 2019. Um, there's a whole part of the cinematics that is different. There's a few elements that I didn't immediately recognize, but overall, it's kind of that same mission. And you can see because the map Rio is is not the same map that we play on in, um, in in PvP. There's some elements that are different, and that was the first thing that stood out for me. I started noticing like, yeah. oh, this panel isn't here, and everybody's like, will you just focus? We're trying to kill these guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what you get when you start making news about Overwatch. You're not kind of yeah. you're looking at it in a completely different way. Everything is content. Um, but um, if I start extrapolating like the the quality in which they made these missions and the length of these missions, like the first one is twenty minutes at best. I had someone who told me that they they, they it took them two hours to take a. Everybody, yeah, but they played it on a really high difficulty level. So if you play it okay. on easy, a <laughs> piece <Peace> face. <laughs> I wish there was a way to describe his face, but it was <laughs> do, I, do I rant about that article that I read? 
Uh, that go really ahead. annoyed me earlier in the week. Okay, so... You know, I've been kind of keeping an eye on what people have been saying about Overwatch. Um, I've only found one positive article so far, or one positive article has been sort of like shown to me um, by my little Google News Finder thing. Oh, I thought you had just a um, little uh, leprechaun running around because... I do, I have, yes. I have a news leprechaun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I found some more of this Overwatch news. Found some more news for you, miss. Um... And then, you know, if he brings me news, I give him food. Yeah, Some days he doesn't eat. Or a sock. Um, <laughs> but, like, I think it was Kotaku that did, like, a positive one. And they were like, oh, yeah, this is exactly what Overwatch needed. This is the best thing that happened to Overwatch. But they also posted an article that was like, yeah, the new Overwatch update absolutely is not worth the money. And it's like, how can it? What? You're just farming both sides of the argument. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, but there was another one that I read. I think it was PC Gamer. Um, and if you listen to our podcast and I'm currently ripping into your article, I'm sorry, but also my points are still valid. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> we love that. We love brutal, brutally honest Hannah. Um, they kind of wrote about how, you know, that they're a, a longtime Overwatch fan and they're really excited for the law and they really enjoyed the law, but the gameplay on the missions was too easy and it was to the point where the enemy forces feel like they weren't even there at all. Like they were just kind of collapsing around them. They weren't doing anything. Um, they may as well have not been there for how easy the game mode was. And I was like, <laughs> stop difficulty. <laughs> mate just up the difficulty there's four difficulties mate, four. mate. try legendary mate, come on yeah. yeah maybe don't play on easy and complain it's too easy i have some really good players in there we have a, like on, on our discord we have some really good players people that are really good at the game that are like on the grandmaster level and they were like yeah legendary yeah. that's a little too little too spicy for playing little too spicy <laughs> i, I did see randoms. <laughs> I did see Emon, CarQ, Flats, and uh, Seagull play together on a stream the day that it came oh, out. Cool. And even they had a hard time. They, we were like there for four hours trying to beat Legendary. And I don't yeah. even, I, well, I tuned out by the time they were still playing, but I was like, <laughs> I don't know if they ever got to it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Try the more difficult. But at some point, it just like you said, it becomes this thing where they. Um, they, well, these these magazines try to make sure that they have everybody's opinion in there. The articles, there's no more, uh, there's no more standpoints. It's just like you know, let's try and cover everything or the popular or the popular opinions. And um, I mean, there's definitely something to say about the gameplay, but not that it's not difficult enough. If you have a toggle mm -hmm. that gives you a more difficult setting, pick that one. If you want to see something before th complaining, it's too easy. And the other thing that really got me, and this was at the point that I stopped reading the article, they said that there was that Null Sector were a faceless enemy and that Blizzard had made them really shallow and that we didn't know anything about them or who was behind these attacks. Yeah, they, they're not Overwatch players. They don't. <laughs> Hannah's making a very disturbed face. She's putting up her hands and like, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> no, um... <clears throat> Yeah, so I read these articles sometimes where people claim that they're Overwatch players and then they say something really stupid that makes it so obvious that they have never played Overwatch before. We're like, what? Excuse me, what what game have you been playing? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like I just said, everybody loves to hate and everybody loves to... Um, yeah. Kind of. Everybody hates to love. Exactly. Anyways, I think... Yeah. It, 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 it's about time that we move on to uh, the next topic. I think if we want to get the four topics out, we need to move on. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, one Last thing. point. No, we're going to go to Iyari. Iyari, oh. yeah. Oh. I have so, so much to say about this character, but go, go, let's, go, go, let's, go, uh, let's do, intro it. Let me do the intro. Let's let me intro. do the intro. <laughs> For the people that, that are not aware, that just came back from a, a six weeks journey in the jungle, um, with season seven we, or with season six, rather, we got a new hero, the thirty-eight hero already for Overwatch, which is a support hero as promised. So now we have ten support heroes, which I mean is pretty awesome. It's great. And Living this my hero, best life. exactly. 
And this hero is called Iyari. She is Peruvian. That's why uh, LP is so enthusiastic. And Life Weaver was a bit of a uh, messy release. This one, man. But I'll let LP talk. But because what this meant for you personally, because he was already rapping yeah. a little bit on this. It's book. like a gift from Blizzard. Yeah. Sorry. You know what's funny? It's like I always thought that like they were always going to skip out this country, like most games typically do. But people forget that like Peru has just such a rich history behind like the civilizations, right? Like the agriculture, the people. It's just a very like rich culture. And I always thought like, you know, this is that one country that always gets like overlooked. But I'm very happy that they released the character. And it turns out the voice actress, uh, I believe her name is Andres Cisneros. She uh, did a fantastic job at voicing this character. I, it, yeah. I just I was shocked from like the get go and um i'll throw in a little bit of tidbits especially like voice lines that I've, I've just heard like my family speak before or like the little sprays um i guess i want to jump into like one of the voice lines where she says que palta, which is really funny because uh, i believe it translates to how lame but palta <laughs> is, is a slang term palta is actually avocado um okay <laughs> yeah i like that i think it's very there we go. Did we lose him? No, 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 I'm still here. I'm still here. My camera just went like, uh, no, we're not doing that anymore. It should be. No, it Get went from that. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Heated. It did not like being called an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. I'll, I'll fix this. Don't worry about it. I'll be back. So so there's a couple of voice lines, right, where she, I can't repeat this. I just, I, I don't have the, the linguistic gymnastics Aww. for this. But uh, she does speak a, a variation of Quechua. Quechua is a very wide uh, language, right? Like you have, oof, uh, th there's like saying, it's like saying, I, I don't know, like it's like saying English, but then you have like your British English or you have your, right, like uh, New Zealand English. Uh, I mean, even that, like across the country, you can go, for example, to the northern side of the country and you will hear phrases that you've never heard in your entire life. And oh, yeah, it's like, yeah. what does that even mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, so is. you, you is it, I believe it's just like uh it's called Runa Simi, which is like a, a another branch of Quechua, and she has this awesome Quechua voice line, which it just sounds really really cool. I, I like I said, I cannot even begin to repeat it. It's very difficult for me to just pronounce it or say it. But um, also little tidbits like when you see the sprays, I really love the sprays. I actually got a chance to look at it before the podcast, and uh, her llama is named Chunyo, which is a freeze-dried potato. I believe there's an interaction with Brig Brig um, Brigitte and uh, Il Iliari where they she talks about, oh, well, I am getting a striped cat. What should I name it? Right? You know that one I'm talking about, right, Hannah? And she, <laughs> she says, Chunyo, freeze-dried potato. And then you have, she's like, oh, name him Hasselback. Great potato reference. So... <laughs> Yeah, and you did say that the one thing that you wanted was a potato reference. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. You got it. It's a freeze <laughs> it was a freeze-dried potato reference. I guess, you know, but I can go back into a history about that. But it's just it's really funny to see um also the sprays where you see just like Chunyo and it kind of looks like there's like a do you know Emperor's New Groove, the yeah, Disney movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, there's like my favorite. Yeah. That one's <laughs> that one spray that it's just the llama. And then they have I'm pretty sure that like that's inspired by Emperor's New Groove. I oh, have yeah, yeah. 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 Um It's too obvious, but that's beautiful. That's kind of fun stuff. And my last one I would say is uh they have one with Iyadi and it's called Outlines or something like that. And it's just like it almost looks like it's chalk drawn. Mm -hmm. Uh but that is a reference to the Nazca lines, which is just like um there's oh, like imprints yeah. in the mountains of Peru where there's like just lines that you can't see from uh ground level, but if you're like in a helicopter or an airplane, you could see them drawn onto the um oh, to yeah. the land. Those alien guys love those, like the uh alien science guys, they're all like, Yeah, but who put that yeah. there? Who did they put I think that there for? They were also like a big <laughs> reference for um Tears of the Kingdom as well. Yeah. yeah. Because there's like giant like patterns basically on the floor on the and at ground level you can't see what they are wow. they're just like lines but then if you go high up you can see what their pictures are they really make cool. up that's yeah. incredible yeah, well, I was yeah. Like, that has to be a reference has to <laughs> that be. has to be inspired by <laughs> yep. i'm happy for you man i like uh, i think um something had like 
with Sigma in a way because he spoke Dutch and I speak Dutch in my part of the country, but that is not the same thing. I think, I think it like you said at the start, it is weird that a lot of games kind of skip Peru because there's so much rich history and mm. there are some parts that I learned like with the the, the to me like the the ritual knives like the little these kind of things yep. too. Like I've said this before in the podcast because of these comics that they have here over in Belgium and a guy that wrote these comics was fascinated by South America, so he put a lot of these things in there. And that always fascinated me when I saw these comics and like, like all these different elements, like these drawings in the floor and whatnot. I all had seen them before. So it is awesome that they kind of take that and and they always do it with so much respect for the local cult, culture and the, the rituals and the yeah everything that is kind of inherent to it, which is uh, beautiful yeah. to see. Yeah. One, uh, one voice line that I'm going to have to call out, it's funny when she kills... Uh, and she kills a uh, poor little wrecking ball. She says, we're going to have Cooey for dinner, which uh, is basically <laughs> guinea pig. We're going to eat guinea pig for dinner. I know he's a hamster, but that's a, that's a great reference because growing up uh, when I was a little kid, I used to eat guinea pig. My grandmother would have like a little farm of guinea pigs in her, in our yard. And like, you know, I'd love to go play inside the pen with the little guinea pigs. And then one morning I woke up and they were all hanging on hooks. Oh, damn. Like, de- deferred. And I was like, I think that was like when my innocence as a child was broken, and then I ended up eating like the yeah. little intestines. Apparently, the intestines are really good. I, I just my vivid memory of eating guinea pig is that the intestines are really like salty and fatty and good, and like I like them. But now nowadays, I just can't even stand to look and think about eating a guinea pig. It's yeah, exactly. I'm too Americanized. Yeah, yeah. I had the same uh, experience with rabbits. Like my dad had rabbits, and one day I, I also saw that the rabbits were hanging upside down. Somewhere and I was like, "Were that the rabbits <laughs> that we were playing with yesterday?" Yeah, but yeah, Yeti's a savage. I was like, "Oh my god, you're telling poor little wrecking ball to like, you know, we're gonna eat you." <laughs> savage. <laughs> yeah, the background story is also kind of. I think she. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I think she, they portrayed her, or they kind of touch on her story right now very lightly. But mm. I think I think she's going to be um, very important in the future. Like. Everything that happened to her, uh, to, go, to, to, to kind of tell her whole story really short, she is one of the children of the sun. She's the last of the children of the sun, and that's because she killed all the others accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, was, oh, <laughs> she just, she, she got her powers. So I don't know if you guys remember that, but we had that one image that era, uh, I think it was uh, Jared Nurse shared where there was that ritual that they did. And basically, mm. that is what they told turns... us about the solar threading. Yeah, where... the solar threading. That's the one, and that basically imbues them with the power that they need. These um, the warriors of the sun, and she was getting her powers, but apparently she's so strong that she just kind of exploded, or the the shoot yeah, burst. She kind of vaporized everything. And like everybody that. that was watching was kind of vaporized, like instantly, like. Yeah. So at one point you're joining the police corps, and the next you accidentally blow them all up, and you're the only police officer in town. That's basically yeah. It. But she is very strong and powerful, so I think that is going to be something. And it, it kind of it was interesting because when we like first had her in game, I was like, okay, she seems really standoffish. Um, that's fine. You know, you don't have to be friends with everybody. You don't have to be friends with everyone. Exactly. And then you watch her like origin story, and you're like. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah I okay. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> and you you gotta <laughs> love the direction that they took with, with her as a character because instead of like making her like depressed and like, oh, I hate everybody, they actually made it like a positive thing. She destroyed her entire like, I guess, colony and or warrior mm-hmm. group. And now she's like, I gotta keep fighting for them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, rather than I just, have like, to honor them, them with every last breath I have. Yeah, exactly. And she's honoring them. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see how that is going to unfold because uh, I, I think Talon might be very interested in her powers, for instance. I know um, Torb is very interested in her kit. Oh yeah, yeah. Can there's a, yeah, there's a, a voice line <laughs> where he's like, "Oh my god, I'd really like love to get my hands on the the specs for you know like your turret. That could be amazing." And she was just like, "Yeah, good luck. The blueprints were destroyed in um, an accident." <laughs> And then he's like, I'll reverse engineer it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Turbion, all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, the, in the game, have you played her, Hannah? I have. Yeah. She's so much fun. I am so bad at her, 
but she is so much fun. I will she practice. She is strong. I think she's one of the she best heroes. Best heroes that they released. I do the believe she's the only support hero with a full DPS ult. Um. Well, yeah, I think she might be. I'm, I'm just yeah. running over them really quickly. Yeah, but like Moira could. She potentially heal can heal. She kill. can heal. She It'll can. <clears throat> Um, Lucio puts on the the beat as the shields. Zenyatta, uh, Mercy, heals. yeah, heals Batiste. and damage boost. Matisse, damage Yeah, he has a he gives everyone a damage boost, but it's not like his DPS. No, that's true. The same with Anna. She gives a boost, but it's not. She like... gives a boost, but it's yeah. not her DPS. Yeah. yeah. Like a purely DPS ult. But, but to be yeah, honest, whereas uh... Iliari is like, you know what? F you. F you. <laughs> and you at the back. <laughs> I think a bigger part of her ult is definitely like um, if, if the team is on top of it, they can definitely make a huge difference i mean she can take out the whole team but not personally by just slowing them down you could click mm. a head or two or three maybe but if the rest of the team is kind of awake but like you only have to do 100 damage to make them explode like yeah yeah, yeah like, like on your right. own you can quite easily get like double yeah. or triple kills if if the enemy is grouped up and stupid um <laughs> sometimes that's stupid <laughs> other times <laughs> so yeah, you you don't expect you don't always know when she's going to do it. It's not like Reinhardt. I mean, she shouts so loud. The yes, first thing I do, <laughs> but you don't have time. When to get I away. hear her, you do. The first thing I do when I hear her is move away from my teammates so that if I explode, I don't kill them. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. Yeah. That, I'm trying to figure out. All so when you like shoot the um, when you land that I guess like sticky sticky bomb or yep. whatever, uh, it, it doesn't. I, I tried it in the training range, but if you don't yep. shoot the enemy with it, it doesn't impl It doesn't explode. No. So it if you the first thing it the main thing it does really is that anyone within its radius it gives them like the slowdown effect, um, and then you'll see the enemies have like the little sun marker above them. Anyone with that sun marker is slowed down and has the potential to explode. They only need to receive a hundred damage to then explode. Oh wow! Yeah, and That's one insecure. explosion will set off another explosion. So it's you can do like a hundred damage to the person in the middle; they will explode, and then it will set off the other two as well. They, but they have to be within that person's radius. Yeah, yeah. and okay. they have yeah they have to have that marker on them. Yeah, exactly. So they have to have been in the radius of the initial hit and then in the radius of the person exploding. Wow. They need to be sunstruck. That's what it's called, which is kind of funny. Sunstruck, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see the huge sunstruck on the screen is kind of funny. Mm. But there, there's like a couple of things that you could, like, Moira's fade just gets rid of it. You know what? Uh, I Yadi's, uh, Yadi's uh, weakness is sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the shades. Have you the guys shades. seen? Have, have you guys seen that they did different different uh, textures for her when she's in the shade and when she's in the sunlight? Yeah, that was so cool. Like her threading starts glowing when she's in the shade. Yeah, she lights up. That's kind of cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean they did a really good job with this hero. Like, and... Again, like how could you be mad at that level of detail? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And we finally have a turret support. That is something we've all been talking I about know. for a really long time. And now, finally, it's there. Jesus, man, those are really pink glasses. It's just I they are so to pink. Take away. <laughs> Thank you. Well, back. Um, yeah, I think, like I just said, I think she's one of the best hero releases that they did. She is too powerful right now, her turret especially. That If that turret latches on to one single person, it is really difficult to kill that person. Because mm. it just the uh, healing output of that turret and the turret, if you don't destroy it, it will stay there indefinitely. So yeah, but uh, destroy it is the yeah, yeah, solution the, to that if, problem. As soon as you see that, oh, that is the solution. But I've I've had turrets up from me as I was playing Gilari. Yeah, people are just kind of running around like I'm thinking, are you? It's not like a festive piece of firework. I'm not going to tell you to kill it because you're on the enemy team, but it might be smart. If you no, it's now part of the map. Don't worry about it. 
Um, but I think that might get nerfed a little bit, that turret. Because that yeah, is I think the turret 60%. might get nerfed a tiny bit. I don't know if her... Like, the damage on her ult will. Um, Maybe. It kind of... Um, kind of yeah. I think it's, in a way, it is circumstantial to... Yeah. The, well, to the situation you're in, which is circumstantial, that's the definition. But yeah, no, also, it, it's kind of... It's one of those things where it does a lot of damage, but it's easy to get rid of. Like, yeah, Diva can eat yeah. it, Moira can just phase out and, like, cancel it, Kiriko can cleanse it. Yeah, as people get used to that ability, they're going to be better in avoiding it. Remember the, yeah. the, those first months of Overwatch where everybody got killed by Diva's ult? At this point, you, if you're lucky, you get... You, and then... People discovered that you could throw Diva's ult, and it happened all over again. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> Do you remember those days where people yeah. didn't yeah. throw Diva's ult? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, there like was a the time where she got killed too. by her own ult. Remember that? I know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to see. I think the first thing they're going to do is nerf her turret. And maybe later yeah. on they might take a look at her ultimate. But I think for now they might leave that as it is. They'll no, but she is a too. lot of fun to play. I just need to get better with aim. Yeah, the, the, her DPS, like a lot of people feel like she is a DPS character instead of, well, she's a hybrid, let's be honest, no, no matter what way you look at it. But if you want to play her as a DPS, you better have good aim because it's not like, um, let's say, Mora, for instance, who just latches on automatically and you, you just take away that life. Um, no, in this case, you really need to... Great for DPS have... scrubs like me. <laughs> How do we feel about her skins? Oh, I'll be... Dude, they have. I, 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 I want more. <laughs> I agree. Is that, is that, I agree. What is, is there is very nice, and her like pajama set is very. It's not very in character, I feel, but it's very cute. I get a few um, things so, just looking at the skin. She looks like a huge ball of sugar candy. She does. Right. Um. So I've got it unlocked. Um. But I'm not using it on her yet because I want like the the full Iliari experience. <laughs> Look at that. True. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got like one of her her normal skins on, but do you guys know if that Don Don and the Sun I don't know the two um the two kind of uh exuberant looking skins if they have like a cultural meaning? I I was actually trying to look into that a little bit and I think there might be something it's like uh when Spanish conquistadors came like the indigenous people would try to like mimic their outfits or costumes of the mm. colonial times. I don't know if that's exactly the reference. I'm trying to find it, but uh, I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought it was a little bit like, yeah, kind of like, like gesture, like gesture, like courtroom, court, court gesture kind of vibes, mm. you know, like junk rat ish. Like I don't mind the crown, but then you've got like the crown and the huge cloak and all the other details. And I'm like, now it's, now it's a bit too much. The way I described it, I have a video that's coming out that I did on the mm -hmm. area. The way I described it is like that she went to a carnival, she drank too much, she came home, yeah. she had a headache, yeah. and she put this big bag of ice on top of her head. I don't know if you guys noticed that. She has this thing on her head. It looks like a huge button. <laughs> if you want to press it. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I'm not a big fan of the skins up till now. Um, same with Life Weaver, by the way. I love playing Life Weaver. I love playing Iari, but... The skins, mm. and I mean that with all most respect for whoever made them. I know someone put in a lot of work, but it's not my thing. It's not my jam. Yeah, I think, like, her skins are nice enough at the moment that I'll put up with it for a bit. I think between Iliari and Life Weaver, I think Life Weaver needs something different, something fun, something less... Life Weaver. I don't I know. Think he needs he needs a little darker tone in his skins. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't oh, see if it resembles like something yeah. like ish. That yeah, is especially is like looking at the, the the details, like in the in the the embroidery and yeah, all that fun. it's Would just very colorful. LP just showed a picture to the camera. You'll have to check out the video podcast to understand what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Yeah, and if you if you if you listen to this while driving, then just skip to the side. Okay, no, we're not encouraging. <laughs> <No. you. laughs> yes, it is a very in, a very uh, interesting 
outfit to say the least. But hey, you know, I can't wait to see the future skins. That's what I'm looking forward yeah. to. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Me too. All right, let's move on to flashpoints because we're getting really close to uh, the deadline. Um, mm-hmm. uh, LP, you were playing push, right? You played push today. Did you get a chance to play flashpoint? No, I didn't. I was okay. see you guys took me out of my groove, as the Emperor <laughs> Kuzco would say. You ruined my groove. Oh God, okay, you're getting accused here. I'm sorry. Hell? You've thrown off the Emperor's groove. For his groove. <laughs> Please give her some voice lines like that. But yeah, I, I want to like. What do you guys think about the game mode? And at, at the moment, Flashpoint feels very chaotic because I don't know the maps. I don't know the spawn points. I, I don't know the capture points, so it feels like a complete mess. But I can see that it's like it's better than I thought it would be. Yeah. So like I thought it sounded a bit like oh well that's well that's just like five CP instead of two CP. But <laughs> no, it is different enough. It is different enough that it feels like its own game mode for sure. Wow. Okay. I kind of missed two CP. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I've heard from what I've heard, this is like a, a good like balance between like push and two CP. Yeah, yeah, it is, and it's it's really good. Like I do enjoy. I've only had a couple of matches so far, um, but I've enjoyed what I've done so far. So I've seen a lot of people like, commenting. The, the small points feel quite claustrophobic, but in a good way. It's like really chaotic. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, you you're getting lost on that map. Uh, it, it is especially at this point because we don't know him yet. But I think that is always mm. going to be a, a bit. I don't think it's going to get to that point where we kind of uh, like with two CP because you had that sequence in two CP. You just had that one thing you needed to go to, and was, as soon as that was unlocked, okay, you go to the next, and you basically have that one stretch between those two points. In this case, it can go in any direction, and that's what I've seen a lot of people complain about is that they're running around a little or, or too much. But I think yeah. Over time, we're going to start to understand that this mode is not about the objectives. The objectives are basically the goals, but you don't need to be fighting. And I'm, I don't say this easily because I'm a huge um, fan of people staying on the freaking payload and staying on the point to make it to kind of make sure we capture shit and don't walk off and don't. But yeah. this is this is definitely a mode where it's you all can right, cut guys, I'll off. push the robot. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry. That, be the, <laughs> you don't want to be the payload princess every run. I mean, you want to kind of... Uh, but in this case, I do think it's a mode where the objective is something you need to capture, but you don't necessarily have to stay. You need to advance against... You can then go off and the, find the enemy. Yeah, yeah, you need to advance against the enemy and make sure they don't make it to the point because the point is captured so quickly and the turnover is so quick that it's more about stopping them from getting there to cut them off, to, to use the, is the whole the best, map. Best medicine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My, it, I it was quite funny. Uh, see. Yeah, my housemate um, kind of popped in when I was playing, and I was explaining the new mode to him, and he was like, "Is this not just going to encourage people to not be on the point in other game modes?" And I was like, "Shut up!" <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> but then they're going to lose. <laughs> it's plain and simple. But I think um, we'll have to see how this pans out. It is yeah. it is different from anything else that we've seen. The maps are gorgeous. They are. Like a, part of me wants to just be like, no, no points. Let's just explore together. But well, you can do that by yourself. <laughs> just make a custom game. No, I know. <laughs> like Suravasa was going to be a two CP map, and they kind of hmm. remade it. Suravasa. They were like, nah, we can make this bigger. Yeah, exactly. They made it a lot bigger. Um, it has really beautiful sceneries. It has really beautiful buildings. It, it misses. Uh, it, I've roamed around it without fighting it, and there's l less details than in other maps. It's not a problem. It is, I think, kind of necessary to make sure you don't get too distracted. Junker, uh, New Junk City is is insane. The amount of details that are in there, the little Easter eggs that they have hidden in that map, is. I, I didn't know where to look first. There's, I, I took these screenshots of every little detail I ran into, and at some point it was like, I think I had like 30 or 40 screenshots that mm. I had taken of small things that had stood out. That, uh, okay, so I haven't actually been able... I've only played New Junk City so far. Is it the same on both maps that there's cheering when you take a point, or is that just a New Junk City thing? Uh, no, there's no cheering in uh, Suravasa for as far as Okay, so it is just because of like the, the like, battle, the yeah, the, 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 stuff yeah, the, in arena. the arena that they hold. Yeah. yeah. I was like, if that's a nod to that, that's a really cool detail. 
<laughs> there's all these but that brings me to a good point the audio on these maps like on new junk city you can hear people yelling at each other and you can hear I your know. whole conversations you can hear the topic they're talking about what they're yelling about to each other like back and forth it's like you're basically on a neighborhood listening into the neighbors you it's are in the city yeah um instead of us it's just like if you if you're stressed just load on that map and okay. and just <laughs> Pick Zinjata, float around a little bit, and settle. Like, there are the best views I've seen in this game on Surafasa. Uh, it's insane. I have, if you like cityscapes, go on the left side. If you like nature, go on the right side. It's all right. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Load up, get an incense candle or like incense, and just like light, light it up and put in your headset and just enjoy. You're going to be you're going to be relaxed by the end of that uh, little session or asleep so, or asleep. Yeah. Just make sure you don't hit your keyboard on the way down. Uh, we don't want to be responsible <laughs> for that. <laughs> I have a key in my stuck in my head thanks to your fucking podcast. <laughs> I have to buy a new keyboard now. Yeah, maybe a good thing my camera's out because the faces I'm making right now. I'm letting, I'm letting <laughs> it cool down a little bit before I switch it back on. Aww. Um, Is one... it sunstruck? <laughs> yeah, apparently. I knew it was kind of an issue with this camera that it couldn't overheat, but I need to look into it. There's ways of kind of avoiding that. But it was a good yeah. test. Uh, bam, bam, bam. Oh, yeah. One more thing I want to talk about before we kind of close things down for today. Progression! Is, uh, is the progression, the hero progression. Um, the uh, This is the feature that I kind of... Like, when they started announcing it, I was like, oh, this is very interesting. But everybody seems to be skimming over it as if it's not yeah. that important. And because, uh, understandably so, because there's so much other stuff that, like a new yeah. hero, the PvE that we've been waiting for for years, a new game mode with two beautiful maps. But I think this is the feature that that we're still going to be talking about in so many years because it is, it is setting... Um, yeah, basically, a, a new progression, setting up a progression system that that will, will transcend any season, that will transcend any game mode that is yeah. going to be there forever. And that is so nicely done in the sense that it basically tracks everything that you're doing, what type of hero, like what type of Reinhardt you are, or what type of Lucio, or what type of Ana, or it kind of tracks these mm -hmm. individual parameters. It levels those, it levels your character, but it also levels your account, which brings back the old levels from Overwatch 1 in a way. Yeah, and it, so you, you have will have to work stats with. to prove that you are a DPS Moira now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is going to be proven. That is going to be... Uh, and and, and they, if people go, eh, all Moiras are just DPS, I can be like, hello. Yeah, have you seen this? I have, look like, at my healing numbers. I have a diamond torch for hand. healing. Yeah. <laughs> The, f the fun thing is that you'll also see those those little badges that you get on every spot possible. The hero yeah. selection screen, the the um, the victory poses, they're everywhere. Like you you can't miss them. And it, yeah, it's really nice to see. Like obviously at the moment, um, I haven't managed to rank anyone up far enough for it to change. But like I've had the the like the smaller badges change you know the ones that are like you've done this much healing you've done this many reses etc mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um and all i can say about it is big numbers go brr <laughs> big numbers make big me numbers happy yeah. Yeah. yeah and i'm just like if i do another match as mercy I, I can get even bigger numbers and level up another badge and and then it will show that i play mercy everyone knows i play mercy mm. But it still makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, but at some point it's going to be very obvious. You, you'll be playing yeah. Anna, and they'll all be like, "Oh, this is a gold, gold uh, badge, Anna." And then suddenly, you pun suddenly you pull out your, your your Mercy, which has a diamond portrait or whatever, and like, "Oh shit, that, that is her main. <laughs> she know what she's doing." Like that type of thing. It, the brag value is there. The progression is there. There is the 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 lure of keep, you keep playing just because you are oh, you're really close mm. to leveling this one or this just one. Just one more turn. Just one more turn. <laughs> no one can exactly. I'll, I'll go to bed after this one last one. No, you won't. The thrill of it. <laughs> the thrill of yeah. it, yeah. And and the fact that if you even if you lose, you see something progress in a positive yeah. sense is not to be underestimated. Uh, it brings you it kind of has you leave that match with a completely different feeling. And mm. the the challenges did that in a way. But the challenges are more rigged. They they kind of also and reset every week. temporary. Yeah. Challenges exactly. are temporary. Progression is forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. a great one. 
so I think this is a feature that people are going to be very happy with in the long run. I think right now it's kind of getting buried under everything else that is happening. So, and like I said, understandably so. Um, but I'm looking forward to kind of getting all my characters leveled. And uh, oh, well, yeah, by the way, do. what do you guys think of the battle pass? Like the rewards for the battle pass? Any opinions? Ah, pretty cool. Like, I like I'm them. really loving all the Omnic themed skins. Yeah, the Omnic themed skins. Are kinda, skins. Yeah. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah, the fire but one kind of freaks said me that, out. Even. Yeah, but it's it's a reference. It it's allowed to. Yeah, it's uh, Evangelion. Evangelion. Uh, Galleon. My apologies. Yeah. Um, no worries. <laughs> uh, but for me, it was more a reference to Beetlejuice. That's the thing well, I saw. Um, I was, like, I was just that one scene in Beetlejuice where the guy is sitting next to him with the small head looking at him. Like that was the first thing to flash to my mind when I saw that. But uh, yeah, and and the Torbjorn skin. I mean, Surf and Splash will always be the number one. But that Torbjorn skin, the Dark Iron Tor, that is a World of Warcraft skin. And, oh, the World of Warcraft wow. one. Yeah. Oh man, that that really hit home. Not I like mean, Captain. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I bet you looks really good with gold. Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think so. Mm -hmm. But th those dwarves in World of Warcraft were they were in the original game back in yeah. Vanilla. They were such a, ma a pain in the ass. So to kind of see them in Overwatch is fun. Uh, there were more epics, and they didn't all have the like in the previous season. They did their best to give all of the battle pass skins the theme, and to add more um, kind of yeah. legendary skins. They didn't ma manage to do that this time around. On the other hand. Um, so last time they did this thing where you, I'm going to finish my thought, otherwise I'm going to forget. Yeah, go, uh, go, 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 go. <laughs> where, they, where they give you the, um, the mythic skin at level 41. And when Jared News was asked, is this going to be the thing from now? And he said, no, 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 next season is going to be different. This was just a test. Turns out that they still changed it because we're all like, oh no, we like it. And they, so. We like it. So now Anna's at. 41, yeah. 61, and 80. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's just a progression. Like, they want to get all the skins in the theme. They didn't make it because they start, didn't start working on this battle pass. Like, uh, when the other battle pass went live, they started working on this battle pass, I don't know, 8, 12, 14 months ago. So yeah. it's not that easy this to turn This was always going to be a big one. Yeah. But we'll see and, how that you know, goes. one of the other epics that we've got, uh, Roadhog, I really like it don't understand where the inspiration came from, but I like it. Yeah, it's like the it's one like of those... Mossy Rock one. Yeah, like the statues, like these old Chinese statues. He's already got an Omnic skin, hello, hasn't he? So Yeah, yeah he does. So the one that him and Jokret got like a few seasons ago, yeah. which maybe they should have kept him for this one, but okay. <laughs> um, maybe there was a test to see how we react to the Omnic skins. That might be it. Or maybe someone was like... Yeah, probably, probably. They sold those. Release it now. Yeah. Um, there are some beautiful skins coming to the shop, too. There's a Fireman Bastion that everybody seems to like. The Sombra. It's so silver. cute. Yeah. There's a there's some good stuff. Can coming. we all just, like, take a moment to appreciate Sombra's emote where she hacks the splicer? Yeah, that is beautiful. She has a pet It's so now. cute. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Look, season six is here. Season uh, the Overwatch Two invasion has started. Um, there's a lot of different opinions out there, but in the end, look, yeah, let me close down things with this statement that not everybody's going to like. But if at some point everybody needs to ask themselves, I can fully understand that you're angry about everything that they promised or what you think and they promised. Trust me, we are too. Oh, we are too, and so are the developers. By the way, the people that work yeah. on the game are just so dis just as disappointed. There's also a lot of uh, people that make claims that put comments on my videos, like they promised us that we would get PVE in the Watchpoint pack. No, they never did. There's a lot of promises out there that people kind of fantasize that they made that they never did, um, and that's fine. We can all be upset about that, but at some point we need to move forward. There's no way in heaven you can write a hundred thousand negative comments on Steam that the talent trees are coming back anytime soon. They might come back in a few years. I've said this before. I think they're, they n they have not let go of that idea, that Titan idea. That is still there. I can guarantee you. The reason that they say that they let it go is because they don't want to raise any expectations and don't want to kind of send us off like, no, no, we're going to do it, but give us... No, they're just like, we're not going to do it. It's, it's not working. 
But secretly, they're all still thinking about it. We That's... need to put that on the long-term thing rather than yeah. the short-term yeah. pile. Yeah. I'm talking about years, years. And oh, yeah, absolutely. To, they're going to slowly evolve. We're not going to get a big release. No, they're going to slowly push this game in that direction. Every time there's a new season, there's going to be something in there that resembles that. That feels like that. Like in the hero mission that we have not talked about or the uh, event mission, there are some mm -hmm. tweaks that used to be in those talent trees that they did to those heroes. Like one of these, uh, some of these abilities are in there. That mission is actually one of those hero missions that they reworked. And they're going to kind of keep evolving that. But at some point, everybody needs to ask themselves, am, am I still so angry that I can't enjoy the game? And maybe it's time to move on. It's not, Overwatch yeah. 1 is not coming back. There's no way. Six for six. I don't know. I'm not going to make any lofty statements, but I don't see that coming back. Um, and talent trees also, just still. another point in general, if it's upsetting you that much, take a step back. Yeah, exactly. It's That's my point. Your health. Yeah. 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 It, it might be time to move on. You can't stay angry at this game forever. And there's going to be mm -hmm. a lot of new people joining in and they won't have that history. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to look at it and they're going to enjoy it. Because at the end of the day, Overwatch is not in a bad place. No matter how much you yell and scream, I think I'm having more fun with this game than ever before. And I know I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people. But those people don't feel the need to speak up because one, you guys threaten them, which is a douchebag move. And two, Absolutely. And, and two, they, they just want to have fun. They want to have fun. They're just doing their thing. They don't care about you and your opinion and what you I think. I mean, I can't remember the last time I went to bed excited to wake up the next day and play Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Like, I haven't had that in years. And that's, Bobby is still in the seat. And now and it's here. Well, can you imagine how it's going to be when Bobby's out of there? Anna's going to be oh. wearing Overwatch t shirts every single day. I am. Yeah. Every single day. Yeah, exactly. And, it's going to be and great. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that LP might have been, that LP actually is taking a nap right now and he's automatically <laughs> just his head because we can't see him. Yeah, just move. Yeah. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, before my camera gives in, let's just uh, round things up. Um, I think we said everything we needed to say. Hannah, where can all these lovely people find you? At Plush Noodle on Twitter. There we go. Perfect. LP? You can find me at Lawns Ponds on Instagram and Twitter. Beautiful. Go check him out. And you can find me as Damesys TV on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Go check out the Omnic Post for all your updates on Overwatch on those same platforms. And you can follow the Omnic Weekly on Instagram or uh, Twitter if you want to. If you want to know if there's a new episode, we post that every single week. But the best way to kind of keep an eye on us to make sure the that we have way. Yeah, exactly. Is to just subscribe on whatever platform you're listening or watching. Remember, we are a video podcast. And this week, I kind of zoned in and out because my camera gave out a few times. But I'll have that face by next week. Uh... Look, I get out. to show you things like this. There you go. What is mm -hmm. it you ask? Kitty cat. I will show you. You spoiled it. I know. <laughs> Anyways, my favorite Bastion skin. <laughs> she put the glasses on the kitty cat. It, that's what it's designed for. I think uh, LP is acting like his <laughs> camera froze. Look, look, look. There's a, <laughs> there's a fan behind you, LP. There's a fan behind you. <laughs> 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 all right guys thank you very much for watching we'll see you all next week till then take care bye 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 and my favorite bastion skin <laughs>